Hello everyone, this is Dr. Irfan Kamruddin Andani and today I am going to continue our previous topic in which we started discussions on first order, second order and third order bands. Today in this lecture we will try to understand that what were first order bands and why they were given. But before going into the detailed explanation, you should know some history about the invention and evolution of bracket system. Don't worry, I am not going to give you all the details about E-arch, pin and tube, etc. But I will take you to the time when ribbon arch was invented, just before the invention of standard edgewise appliance. You can see in this ribbon arch bracket, the bracket is welded or soldered to the metallic band. But the thing you should notice is that the insertion of wire in this bracket is vertical, unlike edgewise. If you want to bond this bracket to any tooth, this is a ribbon arch bracket. It has rectangular slot, but the wire will go into the slot in this direction. This is rectangular wire, but the wider part of this rectangular wire is facing the tooth. Now after the invention of ribbon arch, standard edge wise was invented. And what was the basic difference that was brought into the standard edge wise? just changing the orientation of the wire slot. Now you will appreciate that edgewise also has a rectangular slot for the wire and rectangular wire can be placed inside but the direction of the wire insertion is horizontal. The smaller part of the rectangular wire is facing the tooth. In other words you can say that the edge of the wire is towards the tooth or wire is standing within the bracket on its edges and from that the terminology edgewise was derived. Now you should remember that whenever the word edgewise is used it means any bracket system which has rectangular wire slot and which is horizontally oriented is known as edgewise bracket. Now the same question that what is the difference between standard edgewise and contemporary edgewise which is also known as a straight wire appliance. Before explanation let's see this picture. On my left hand side this is edgewise bracket but a standard edgewise which was invented in 1920s while over my right hand side this is a straight wire bracket or contemporary edgewise bracket. There is no difference in the slot of both the brackets but you can appreciate that the difference is just in the angulation this bracket is more angulated, however, a standard edgewise is straight. If you see the profile view or the side view of the bracket, here you will appreciate that in a standard edgewise, the width of the bracket base is uniform all over in the standard edgewise. However, the thickness of the bracket base varies in contemporary edgewise. And because of that, the contemporary edgewise bracket looks angulated even in its profile view while standard edgewise looks straight. We will discuss that in more details in upcoming lectures. The size of the slot is same in both the systems. Whether it's standard edgewise or contemporary edgewise, the depth of the bracket is approximately 0.028 inch and height of the bracket slot is approximately 0.022 inch. Now I am repeating that what is the advantage of using rectangular bracket slot and rectangular wire. When rectangular wire is placed in the bracket and you are twisting this wire in anti-clockwise direction, you will have some control over the movement of the root. While twisting the wire in opposite direction or clockwise direction, you can bring the root labially. So in this way you can have some control over the torque. This torque movement was impossible with bags appliance and other bracket system which had a round wire slot. It was a bit difficult even with ribbon arch wire but it is much easier with edgewise brackets whether it's standard or it's contemporary edgewise. The reason for this type of movement is very simple that to open up a nut bolt you need the wrench of the exact size. Still if you have difficulty in understanding this concept then I would like you to refer to my previous presentations on biomechanics. Now let's begin our main topic that what are first order bands and why they were given. For instance this is a maxillary arch 
and you can see that all the teeth are very well aligned all the incisal edges cuspal tips are in a line and i'm sure that you will not like to disturb this kind of alignment in an ideal arch and if all the teeth have ideal morphology then you will notice that the thickness of the canines and central incisors is more as compared to the lateral incisor one more thing you should notice that the buccal surface of upper molars showing some rotations these are the features which are found in an ideally aligned arch now let's assume that if a patient with this kind of ideally aligned arch comes to you and for the sake of just his inclination towards the fixed braces he requests you to bond brackets on his dentition but in your inventory you had just standard edgewise brackets and you did not have contemporary edgewise so you bonded those brackets now let me clear that in a standard edgewise bracket system all the brackets are of same thickness and same dimensions it doesn't matter whether you bond the brackets of lateral incisors on the canine or on central incisor all the brackets are same and interchangeable so when you will give the wire for the alignment just observe the distance between this arch wire and the bracket of the lateral incisor and also notice that the wire is not passively going into the buccal tube or bracket on the molar when you will engage this aligning wire you will get some undesired movements since the wire is very springy it will definitely bring the lateral incisors labially and will also cause undesired mesiolingual rotation of the upper molars if you are confused let me explain that again with our previous example a patient comes to you with this kind of crowding or malalignment now you have given standard edgewise brackets and you have given first wire for the alignment of dentition which is very springy in nature when you will fix this wire into the bracket slots it will start movements of these teeth and when you will reach to the heaviest rectangular wire you should get ideal alignment but here you have achieved alignment for sure but this alignment is not ideal see the contact point displacement between canine and lateral and central incisors because of the extra labial movement of these lateral incisors even the rotation of the molar is not ideal compare it with the ideal arch which i showed you before on my right hand side the alignment is very ideal but on left hand side you can see that this curve is not going smoothly with the buccal cusp tips and the incisal edges so there is some kind of malalignment and the only reason for that is that morphologically the thickness of lateral incisors is lesser than the central and the canine and in natural dentition there is some rotation of molars as well but in standard edgewise all the brackets were same what is the solution if you want to get an ideal alignment back with the standard edgewise system you will have to give some bands in the rectangular wire of course which should be stainless steel or tma wire which has formability and you can do some wire bendings in that wire so let's do it these are the areas where you will need wire bendings and these are first order bands now when you will fix this arch wire these bendings in the wire will push the incisors back lingually and it will also rotate the mesiobuccal surface of upper molars a bit outward so now you are getting the ideal alignment back just because of these wire bandings which we call first order bands by definition first order or in and out bands are given to compensate the difference in the buccolingual thickness of the labial surface of the teeth and are given to rotate the molars for better occlusion these were the bands first order bands which were given in the final stages when we used to use standard edgewise brackets this is the picture from contemporary orthodontics by william prophet you can see in the upper arch in and out band for the lateral incisor and in the molar area to compensate the rotations of upper molars 
Similarly, to make the canine a bit more prominent, there is again first order band given in the lower arch in the canine area and for the molar same kind of first order band. But what about contemporary edge vice appliance, also known as a straight wire appliance? The name shows that wire should go straight and with that straight wire at the finishing stage of orthodontic treatment, you should get ideal occlusion. How do you achieve that with contemporary braces? In contemporary edgewise brackets, the thickness of the brackets are modified. How? The thickness of the base of the lateral incisor bracket is increased and you can appreciate some variation in the thickness of the molar tube as well. Now if you are giving a final arch wire for the finishing purpose, this wire will go straight without any unwanted movement and without disturbing the ideal occlusion. That is the reason it is known as straight wire appliance. So the contemporary edge wise brackets, how first order bands are compensated? This compensation is built into the base of the bracket itself by varying the thickness of the base. Now let me show you the profile of all the brackets. You must appreciate that the thickness of the base of the lateral incisor bracket is a lot if you compare it with the central incisor. Even the thickness of the premolar bracket is more as compared to the canine one. Same is with the molar tube. See the variation in the thickness of the base of this molar tube. We call it 10 degrees offset and this is given just to get back the rotation of upper molar for an ideal occlusion. I hope I have given you the concept of first order bands and how they are compensated in contemporary edge wise. In our next lecture I will talk about the second order bands so stay tuned. Thank you.